The first word embedding approach that we're going to look at that really gets away from this one-art encoding problem is called word to vec And this is really a framework. It was introduced in 2013, and it really took the natural language processing community um, by storm. It looks a little bit like a neural network. It's moving in, in that direction, but we can think about it without um, talking about neural networks um, just for, a, for the moment. And it relies on this basic idea, which forms the basis for many of the modern natural language processing um, approaches. And this is that a word's meaning is given by the words that frequently appear close by to that word. Basically, words that go together belong together. You might have heard that phrase. And word to vec is based on this principle. We're going to look at two um, variants of word to vec. The one is called skipgram, and the other one is the continuous bag of words approach. And in skipgram, what we're going to do is we're going to try and predict context words that occur around a particular center word. So here's the basic idea behind skipgram. If I've got a center word like loves, I want to try and predict the probability of the word that precedes it and the word that precedes that one, as well as the probability that follows this word and the word that follows that one. If we have a sentence like, since the man loves his son so much, blah, 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 blah. That's the real basic idea behind skipgram is that we will have this little window um, with the center word and then words that precede the center word and words that follow the center word. And we want to model the probability of the words before and after the center word. So for instance, we want the probability of the word um, son, given that the center word is loves. Okay, that's what the model will try and do. How will the model do this? The model will do this by um, basically creating a word embedding for every word type in our vocabulary. So we would end up having a word embedding for the word loves and a word embedding for the word son. I write it as, as vectors W and W here, but in a second that will change to U and V. Okay, but just for now, for the intuition, you can think of this as a word embedding and this as a word embedding. And what Skipgram does at an intuitive level is it basically pushes the vector for loves so that it's close to the vector for sun. What we would do if we have a very long sequence is that we will move this window. We will basically slide this window over the sentence. So a next window might look like this where we are trying to now model the center word his and we're trying to capture what comes before it and what comes after it in this um, little window. So this is basically the underlying principle for the skipgram model, that we're going to try and model what comes before and what comes after if we're given a specific center word. In this example, I use a window that has two preceding words and two following it, but that's a free parameter of the approach. So we could also use windows with three and three, or maybe in extreme cases, windows of one and one. Now, Skipgram makes three crucial assumptions. The first one is that each of these windows um, are identically and independently distributed IID samples. The IID assumption basically says that each of these windows can be treated as an independent input-output sample, where your input is the center word and your output are these words that go um, before it. This assumption is actually wrong, right? Because clearly there is some special relationship between his and loves, which you now kind of ignore if you say that, oh, the his and loves here is treated in an independent way of what happened here, because these windows are clearly related in some way. Okay, but we still make that assumption. It's a useful assumption and we very often make it um, in machine learning. The second assumption is that, and this is, this is also a wrong assumption, also a little bit crazy, is that within each window, each context word is conditionally independent given the center word. So let's just look at this window and write out that assumption for this case. So for this window, we're trying to model um, the probability of the word the um, man, his, and son. So these are the things two before and two after, given the center word loves. What the second assumption of, of Skipgram says is that 
each of these words conditioned on the center word, the probability for each of them can be treated separately. So they're conditionally independent given the center word. In other words, I can model this as the word the, given the center word loves, times probability of the word man, coming just before, given loves, times the probability of the word his, following loves, and times the probability of son, following in two steps after loves. Okay. So that's the, the second skip gram assumption. The third skip gram assumption, which I've actually already kind of fiddled into the notation here, is that actually what we're going to do is we're going to treat the probability of a word coming to before and the probability of it coming one before and the probability of it following and the probability of, the, of, of it following in two steps, we're going to treat all of these the same. In other words, if we had the sequence something something, um, son loves the, okay, dunk, 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 the probability of the following loves, P of the given loves, in exactly the next position, we're going to treat that exactly the same as the probability of where word the loves when the is two before loves, okay? Or the probability of sun with the center word loves, we're going to treat that the same in this case as in this case where it goes two before. So basically, you're only modeling the probability of a word that it occurs somewhere in the context window that we are considering, okay? So we're just modeling the probability that this word is one of the context words for the center word um, loves. Okay, so those are the three assumptions. Windows or IID samples, the probability of the context words are conditionally independent given the center word, and the probability of the context word given the center word is um, the same regardless of where the context word occurs in the window. That's the three skip gram assumptions.